Welcome students to another class in our research methods. In our class today we will be talking about how to classify and the different types of research. Remember you can classify things and give the types as two different things. Therefore, how, what do you usually talk about in a classification of research? We usually have different fields in research or you may be having health, education, recreation and so on. And therefore, when you're classifying research, there are a number of things that you have to do. First, you have to look at the field of study, okay? In the field of study, what you usually talk about is the discipline. You want to understand which discipline and uh, is it for educational research, is it for sociological research, and so on. Therefore, when you're classifying types of research, you have to have the different things. Then you have to know, uh, will it be field research, will it... So you, you need to know where will you conduct that research as the second classification. Will you do it in the field? Will you do it, uh, will you do it in the lab? And so on. So you need to know, will it be a field kind of a research? Will it be a lab kind of a research? Then you need to talk about the application. What are the applications that are required to be able to do it? Is it an active research? Is it an... Uh, an action research, is it a uh, service research, and so on. Then the purpose of the research. What, what is the end result that you want to get out of it? Now, under basic research and applied and action research, we'll talk about more on the purposes of research. Then the methods of analysis. Do you want descriptive? Do you want to have descriptive analysis? Or do you want just to have the normal uh, empirical research? Now, another thing that usually helps us to classify research is that the character of the data collected. Will it be qualitative? That is, are you looking at the quality of specific things? Or are you looking at the quantity of the things that will be, that will be of the data? That is, is the data that you are collecting of a certain, you are recounting the number of cars or are you counting the types of cars? quality or quantity. Then the procedure or the design used, it could be experimental or it could be a survey research. Now on the types of research, on the types of research, the first one that we we'll talk about is the basic research. Now, this, this type of research is the one that you usually undertake so that you know more about whatever is there. Almost all research is basic research. Although, the good thing about basic research is that you are able to generate new knowledge. Whatever people used to know about something, you can get more out of it through having basic research. What about applied research? Now, this, this usually, applied research is usually applied so that we can uh, improve on whatever is already there. So there are a number of theories that people might have suggested on how to carry out things. So applied research helps us to improve on what has already been talked about. Then you can look at uh, action research. Now this is usually a small scale kind of a research that is usually situational. Where you want to know if I do A, B and C, would the outcomes be 1, 2 and 3 or X, Y and Z? Then we have descriptive research. Now this one is usually undertaken in order to be able to, this one is usually undertaken in order to understand different levels of things. For example, we want to know uh, the, the people that occupy a certain section of, uh, of the economy, or the people that undertake a certain thing. What is the education status, what is their age, and so on. So what you usually do about that is you are carrying out a descriptive research because descriptive research usually tries to ascertain the characteristics of a certain uh, place. Then you have correlational research. Correlational research usually tries to understand two or more things. It tries to understand uh, the relationship between, uh, uh, you can think of a a variable x and a variable y. Now, let's talk about variable x being uh, maybe the, the salary that someone receives 
and variable y b let it be the uh, level of education okay so you want to carry out a research to show the relationship between salaries that people receive and the level of depending on their level of education what you usually undertake is you do something called a correlational research where you find how x is correlated to y how well it is correlated to y now there are usually two ways of doing it i'm so sure the ones that are doing statistics you've been able to talk about the spearman runs you've been able to talk about uh, the spearman's rank order and also the pearson's moments of coefficient okay so the correlation is the correlation is able to answer questions like is x correlated to y you can say yes are they positively correlated or are they negatively correlated then you have casual research now this casual research is you want to just know what caused something to happen what caused a certain phenomena to occur you want to understand uh, <coughs> this specific uh, phenomena was caused by a number of reasons <coughs> excuse me now this one is usually more effective where where the researcher has <coughs> where the researcher has already found a, a niche or a problem that existed in the in whatever in whatever papers had already been written then let's talk about historical research now historical research is what you usually do when you want to find out what happened in a previous time for example you want to know what pushed the kenya new in the 1980s to start, not the kenyan youth but the kenyan uh, politician to try and start a coup that's what usually mean by a by a historical research you can also want to see why people decided uh, maybe to to uh, to start the multi party elections and so on these are the things that when you are doing a historical research you are trying to understand what led to certain things happening in the past then another one that we we'll talk about is the experimental research now the experimental research usually goes into detail of what was if you actually uh, goes into detail on what causes a certain phenomena where you ma manipulate both of the variables that you are trying to do to come up with an actual outcome finally you have the longitudinal studies now the longitudinal studies one thing that you'll notice is that it may be listed as a type of research but in most cases it falls under the types of research and we have different types of longitudinal studies where you have the trend studies now the trend studies usually tries to look at what usually happens over a certain period of time we have the cohort studies cohort studies usually go and pinpoint at a specific uh, specific group you want to know that the people that were born from 1985 to 1995 what do they actually do in common that's what you mean by a cohort study when you are looking at a specific cohort then you usually have panel studies now panel studies mix mixes both of them because you see trends usually look at how things have been happening maybe from 1985 to 2000 Panel studies now says both cohort and the trend studies. That's all for our today's class. I'm really happy that uh, we are going on so well. Next time we'll introduce the third topic where we'll be talking about more on research methods. Thank you and have a great week ahead.